Today we're here with Anthony Levera, and if you could just tell us a little bit about yourself and maybe how you came to know of all the people. My name is Anthony Levera. I'm an artist, writer, and educator. I've known Burnt for for a number of years and, and known of his photography. And I first heard all, about all the people when I think Burnt kind of got in touch to say that he was working on this project. Um, so I'm really curious to hear some of your thoughts on the book. One of the things that I was really kind of um, curious about and impressed by was the the, the sort of range of ages of, the, of the, the subjects or participants in the project. I think the, the youngest is uh, a young girl called Birdie. Uh, I think she might be around six years old or something like this. Yeah, five. Five. Yes. Um, and you know, the thing that really struck me about her story is the way in which her mother... Actually, it was the voice of her mother in the account of, of Birdie's experience and the kind of acceptance and resilience that, that both Birdie and her mother kind of experience in their everyday life and the kind of, the kind of challenges that they've faced. I mean, one of the things that I think is really great about the project is the kind of geographical scope. So, you know, it takes in uh, and represents participants who are based here in the UK, based in America and various countries across Europe and some of those people who have cultural heritages which stretch out towards India. But I think one of the main sorts of themes that, that kind of comes to my mind about this project is how it kind of focuses on the positives rather than the kind of difficulties of, of the challenges uh, that people face and, and, and the kind of perspectives that people bring to the world through their identity that hopefully will enable the readers to just rethink and shift and, and, and accommodate, I suppose, uh, other people's points of view um, and life experiences. And I was really struck by the introduction and how in the introduction you, Emily, kind of acknowledged your own difference and Burns' own difference from the people that you represent and how you sort of say that you're you don't identify as trans, neither of you, but you have, you know, you have a kind of... Uh, I don't think he used quite these words, so correct me if I'm wrong, but almost a sense of obligation, a sense of affiliation, a sense of being an ally, I suppose. And I think that, that for me, that sense of, of ally uh, it really kind of comes through, um, both in the photographs, but also in the accounts that accompany the photographs. One of the things that I'm interested in uh, as an artist and writer and, and in my education work is how how photographers and people invested in representing other people sort of negotiate the sense of responsibility they have towards representation. I think it was uh, the artist and writer Martha Rosler who calls that representational responsibility. Mm. And the, the, so for me, the, there is a sense of representational responsibility that shines through in the book uh, as you know yourself and Burnt as allies uh, kind of feel obliged to to kind of be answerable to as well as those particular kind of friends and 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 uh, colleagues that you have that that kind of become kind of consultants or advisors or voices in the back of your head mm -hmm. you know i think it is really interesting how in the introduction you acknowledge that you know a recurrent question that would come out and would be directed back at you and burnt is this question of why and, and I think kind of that's always a really good place to start from when, when we make photographs of other people whose life experiences are different to ours. Is what, why are you doing this? What's in it for you? And, and what are you getting out of it? And in a sense, you know, if, if the sort of aim is to, to kind of see the people that are being depicted as collaborators in some way, then there is, you know, hopefully what one is doing is striving towards a kind of equitable sense of... of, of being able to say how they would like to be represented and be able to present themselves and their experiences in ways that they're happy with and comfortable with. It's striking to me that there's a really sort of performative element to the photographs, uh, to a number of the photographs, that people are kind of performing for the camera but at the same time letting some guard down. And there's a really strong sense, I think, in these portraits of, of a sense of trust and openness that uh, is being displayed uh, by the participant in that time they spend with Burnt as he's pointing a camera towards them. That they're not only kind of showing something of their public self and the kind of the, the identity that they want to project to the world as a, a drag king or a drag queen or, or someone who works in dance or performance, 
but also as someone who's sort of celebrating their identity and, and claiming space for their identity um, within the public sphere. For me, what I hope is that a reader who has limited understanding of queer people and, and what it means to be trans or to identify across that gender queer spectrum will read this book, come away from it, engage with the photographs with a different understanding of, of how there are many ways in which people can uh, be in the world. And if that then means that, 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 you know, that's kind of shaped through people who are comfortable being part of a project or comfortable being in the public eye, are comfortable at kind of uh, putting forward their views, that that's just the tip of the iceberg. And the, the, you know, there's, there's undoubtedly many more people out there who may benefit from that. I think one of the ways that we as human persons in the world get forward in life and you know is through learning through stories. It's just, it, you know it, we're, we're storytellers each and every one of us and and I think for me what I really enjoyed about the book is is how there's a whole kind of catalogue here of other people's stories and that kind of touch on the sort of day-to-day -day life of, of being someone who identifies as trans or however they identify and that's kind of another thing that's really interesting about the book actually it's not just about trans men and trans women you know, there's a there's a uh, you know there's a gay man in here that sort of has an expanded sense of what it means to be a man and I think that's really beautiful and, and absolutely has a place in, in a project like this. As much of a place as, you know, a young six-year-old, five-year-old trans woman, trans girl. Another thing that really kind of struck me was when Morella, when Morella speaks about this idea of uh, internalised transphobia um, that many people experience and, and how when someone comes to accept their true being, in, in the world, it's not a straightforward process, you know, and, and how that there can be challenges that kind of last with you for a lifetime or that kind of stay with you and, and you don't really acknowledge and aren't able to articulate or kind of deal with uh, even after you've had the courage to come out to your friends and family. Actually, I was curious if there was anything that jumped out at you that really resonated personally something that mirrored something of your own um, experience or thought process around, I guess, around identity? Well, I identify as a gay man. And, you know, I have my, my own sort of experience of identity is, is very different to people who identify as trans. I get that. Um, I would like to think of myself as an ally to the trans community um, and the queer communities at large. And... You know, I, I sort of feel that when, when I was reading the book that there were there were a number of things that I could kind of relate to or resonate with or that resonated with me. Um, and there were things that actually I had absolutely no experience of whatsoever. And so I was really kind of uh, curious and, and grateful to, to learn about other people's experiences of negotiating family, negotiating sort of systems of, you know, education, politics, healthcare. One of the things that I thought was really interesting was say when someone like Nando talks about this idea of visibility and how visibility is kind of important to them um, and it's more than just a sense of the visual. It's, it's about actually kind of staking claim for public space and the kind of right to own and be in that space as much as anyone else. And as a gay man, I'm often kind of thinking, God, I'm so sick of looking at heterosexual people. They're everywhere. They're in the advertising that's, that, that I kind of deal with and I'm on the tube every day. Yeah. They're in the television that I watch. They're on, you know, they're just everywhere. And, and then, then, then occasionally there might be moments of same-sex couple relations. And I'm not even talking about this idea of, of you know, affection or, or, or sex, but actually just two men living together. You know, I, I'm all for pushing forward in, in creating more and more space for us to be visible, to be uh, recognised, to for us all to be represented in the public sphere. I think it's really important. So there was something about this idea of visibility that really kind of resonated for me, I think. Well, thank you so much. It's been really nice chatting and getting your very thoughtful and in-depth, really, in-depth sort of analysis and feedback on the book. Oh, you're welcome. It's been a real um, pleasure talking with you and, and watching this project grow and, and, you know, hearing about it from the very beginning 
and and now being able to sit down with the with the beautiful object that it is it's it's a really beautiful object um beautiful not only because of the the photographs i think burnt has done a really superb job of of documenting uh, this group of individuals in a way that's both casual and open but also has a sense of play and conceptual weight behind it and then to 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 read this these beautiful stories and the writing that pulls the stories together i think it's a really coherent project well thank you you're welcome <laughs>